Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is Reading the Bible in 123 Days. We're on day 73. Today we'll be reading Isaiah 38 to 46. And we are uh, continuing on with the basically the recap of King Hezekiah. Which, um, if you recall, he was... A good king obviously it wasn't perfect because nobody is um, and if you recall he made a, a great error showing um, Babylon's ambassadors all his treasures and all his houses and he kept nothing hidden from them for some reason I don't know why but he did and then that's what gave them the uh, the start of the idea to come years later and wipe out all the treasures and wipe out all the people. So, Hezekiah, read more about him. So, Isaiah 38, verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith Yahweh, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto Yahweh, and said, Remember now, O Yahweh, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of Yahweh to Isaiah, saying, Go, and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith Yahweh, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, and I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and the city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city, and this shall be a sign unto thee from the Yahweh, that Yahweh will do this thing that he hath spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backward. So the sun returned ten degrees, which by which degrees it was gone down. The writing of Hezekiah king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness, I said in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said, I shall not see Yahweh, even Yahweh in the land of the living. I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. Mine age is departed, and is removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a weaver in my life. He will cut me off with pinning sickness. From day even to night wilt thou make an end of me. I reckon till morning that as a lion so will he break all my bones. From day even to night wilt thou make an end of me. Like a crane or swallow, so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove, mine eyes fail with looking upward. O oh, Yahweh, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. What shall I say? He hath both spoken unto me, and himself hath done it. I shall go softly all my years, and the bitterness of my soul. O oh, Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So wilt thou recover me, and will make me to live. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption, for thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down to the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee, as I do this day. The Father to the children shall make known thy truth. Yahweh was ready to save me, therefore we will sing my songs to the string and instruments all the days of our life in the house of Yahweh. For Isaiah had said, Let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster upon the boil, and he shall recover. Hezekiah had also had said, that, What is the sign that I shall go up to the house of Yahweh? Isaiah 38 At that time, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he had heard that he had been sick and was recovered. Hezekiah was glad of them, and showed them the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold, and the spices and the precious ointment, and all the house of his armor, and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house, nor in all his dominion, that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto king Hezekiah, and said unto them, What said these men, and from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country unto me, even from 
Babylon. Then said he, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. Then said Hezekiah, excuse me, Isaiah to Hezekiah, Hear the word of Yahweh of hosts. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house, and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day, shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith Yahweh. Um, here's another thing that we see come to pass, don't we? We already know this happens. We already know that Babylon comes and takes everything. Everything, excuse me. They take everything from uh, Jerusalem. People, things, and they leave nothing behind besides rubble. Right? They destroy the walls, they destroy the temple, they burn the city. So, they took everything. Isaiah 9, 39, 7, And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, Good is the word of Yahweh which thou hast spoken. He said moreover, For there shall be peace and truth in my days. Isaiah 40, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of Yahweh's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, <laughs> here's a great verse, right? The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of Yahweh, make straight in the desert a, a highway for our God. Isn't this an amazing verse? I'm sure if you've read the Bible before, you know what this is referring to. It's referring to the New Testament. To John the Baptist, right? And uh, here's just more prophecy that we see come to pass. So, every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of Yahweh shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of Yahweh hath spoken it. The voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as a flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of Yahweh bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. What a great verse that is. I think, um, actually I know Isaiah 40 has a lot of amazing verses. Uh, so, definitely highlight some of these verses that speak out to you. So, everything fades away. Everything passes, everything dies, everything comes to ruinous heaps. But, the word of our God shall stand forever. Isn't that amazing? O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength, lift up, lift it up, be not afraid, and say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord Yahweh will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, he shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them into his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with a span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed, weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance? Who hath directed the spirit of Yahweh, or being his counselor, hath taught him? With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast throw up sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing, and vanity. To whom then will you liken God, or what likeness will you compare unto him? The workman melteth a graven image. And the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold, and casteth silver chains. He that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot. 
he seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Have ye not known, have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. That bringeth the princes to nothing, he maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted, yea, they shall not be sown, yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will you liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them by all names, by the greatness of his might, for the he for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from Yahweh, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, Yahweh, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. So another great verse. Um, to the people who always like to nitpick the Bible, and want answers to every single little thing in the Bible. Uh, and there's people like that, even among Christians. They're like, I want an answer to everything. I want to know everything. Well, guess what? There is no searching of his understanding. And we're not going to be uh, told every little thing, every little detail. Uh, and have all our questions answered. At least not in this life. Maybe in heaven, but we don't know for sure if he'll let us know. But the fact remains that in this lifetime, in our lifetime, we will never know every single answer because we are gods. We are the creation of our, the one true living God. And we only know the things that he reveals to us. We're not going to know every single little detail. You can spend your whole life reading the Bible to and fro, back and forth, um, just devoting your entire life to the Bible and the knowledge of it. And you will still still never understand it all that's just something we have to get through our heads we're not going to understand everything we're not going to be told everything and have all our questions answered and then uh, people use that and say well if you can't answer my question I guess the Bible's wrong well that's a whole nother uh, topic of debate but the fact remains that we aren't gonna know everything and if we could know everything then we would just be we'd be gods and we're not gods there is only one god our creator the living god yahweh so um, if you have questions that you need answered um, pray about them of course pray about them and maybe god will reveal them to you if that's his will for your life that's his will for you to know that because he does reveal certain things to us but he won't reveal everything to us because if we knew everything why would we need God? Why would we trust in God? Why would we pray to God if we knew everything and we could handle everything ourselves? Then, we, like I said, we would be gods. But no, we're supposed to rely on Him, have faith in, in God, and, and trust in Him. We're not going to know everything. That's why we need to rely on Him and turn to Him, search Him out. So, anyway, that's a whole other Bible study, isn't it? <laughs> oh, man. I could... I could come up with so many different topics for Bible studies, which is, uh, you know, amazing because the Bible is full of, of amazing truths that could be turned into Bible studies. Isaiah 40, 29. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon Yahweh shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Uh, this is another amazing verse in this chapter, and this is probably um, this is probably my mom's favorite verse. This well, one of them. This is definitely um, a great verse. Um, how many times have I said to wait on God, to tr uh, trust in Him, and faith in Him? All right. There's a reason why we need to be patient, which is hard to do, um, and wait upon Him, because it's God's timing, not our timing. Um, if it was our timing, everything would happen instantly, wouldn't it? And maybe that uh, our timing wouldn't be the best timing. Uh, but anyway, we need to wait on God. 
So, and uh, and when we do, we won't be weary, and we won't faint, because God takes care of us. Anyway, that alone could be a Bible study, waiting on the Lord. As I have forty one. Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, let them speak, let us come near together to judgment. Who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him rule over kings. He gave them as the dust to his sword, and as driven stubble to his bow. He pursued them and passed safely, even by the way that he had not gone with his feet. Who hath wrought and done it? calling the generations from the beginning i yahweh the first and with the last i am he the isles sought and feared the ends of the earth were afraid drew near and came they helped everyone his neighbor and everyone said to his brother be of good courage yeah you know how many times the bible uh does that uh say that you know there's a uh, joshua 9 um don't be afraid uh, be of a good courage. And then there's uh, Deuteronomy 38, no, 31, 8, excuse me, um, to be of good courage. I mean, we're just told many times in the Bible to be of good courage um, because it's God who will give us the strength. So that's why we should have confidence in Him and not in ourselves. Like, um, you know, Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Uh, lean not on your own understanding, right? That part of the verse where it says, lean not on your own understanding. Not to lean on our own understanding, we're supposed to lean on God, trust in God. So, the house saw it and fear the ends of the earth were afraid to drew near and came. They helped everyone his neighbor and everyone said his brother, be of good courage. The carpenter incurs the goldsmith, and he that smootheth with the hammer him that smote the anvil, saying, It is ready for the soldering. He fastened it with nails, that it should not be moved. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen the seed of Abraham, my friend, to whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Truly an amazing verse right here. And yet this goes together um, with Joshua 1.9. So you can, in your Bible, I'm sure there's a reference. If you have a reference Bible, um, on the sides there or in the margins, there's probably a reference to Joshua 1.9 or Deuteronomy 31.8. Um, and that's why I love reference Bibles, but also if you just have a normal Bible with no references, no notes or anything, you can make your own notes and that's actually better for learning and getting it in your head. So like, for example, I would put here in my Bible, in fact, I think my, my regular Bible that has no notes or no, um, references, um, I put on the side here, I write, I write, um, verses and or notes. So I'd write Joshua 1, 9 here. So... Um, yeah, make your own references in your Bible. Like I said before, I'll say it again. If you have a Bible, physical Bible, I think you should mark it up. Obviously not like be rough with it or treat it badly or, um, you know, you know, that's not what I mean. What I mean is to highlight it, make notes, underlined verses, uh, you know, write verses down on the side. So, um, yeah, I remember the words are, are what's important. The Bible itself is just paper and ink. You know, it's going to pass away eventually. Um, so we shouldn't treat the book itself, the physical book itself, as as gold and wanting to treasure it. But what we should we should treasure the words, not the book. So um, that's why I think it's okay to um, write in your Bible. Underline stuff, highlight stuff, because... It helps you memorize it and it's the words that are important if you can memorize the words by uh, highlighting something then that's worth more than keeping it pris in, in pristine condition and then you know who cares if it's in pristine condition what do you what what good is that going to do you when you're dead that Bible is just going to be sitting somewhere collecting dust um, you know 
But anyway, that that's a whole other topic too. But uh, anyway, 41.10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So amazing. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing, and as a thing of naught. For I, Yahweh thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. That one goes very well together with 41.10, doesn't it? Man, very well. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith Yahweh, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and thou shalt make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in Yahweh, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, Yahweh, will hear them. I, the God of Jacob, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Actually, um, <laughs> I messed up saying that, but, you know, God of Jacob, Jacob is Israel. Remember, remember that God, it was God who changed uh, Jacob's name to Israel. So, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a.k.a. Israel. So, um, yeah, God of Jacob, God of Israel is interchangeable. Will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness up as a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shittah tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will send the desert fir trees and the pine and the box tree together. Ooh, box. I don't know if the box tree is the same as what we have today. Box elder trees. Box elder bugs. Wait, I think the box elder bugs come from the box trees. I'm not sure exactly, but I just know those those box elder bugs are just so annoying. Okay, 4120. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of Yahweh hath done this, and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Produce your cause, saith Yahweh. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the King of Jacob. Let them bring... Let them bring them forth, and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, and what we may consider them, and know the latter end of them, or declare us things for to come. Show the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that ye are gods. Yea, do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed, and behold it together. Behold, ye are of nothing, and your work of naught, and abomination is he that chooseth you. I have raised up one from the north, and he shall come from the rising of the sun, shall he call upon my name. And he shall come upon princes of, as upon mortar, and as the potter treadeth clay. So. Who hath declared from the beginning that we may know? And before time, that we may say, He is righteous. He is righteous? Yea, there is none that showeth, yea. There is none that declareth, yea. There is none that heareth your words. The first shall say to Zion, Behold, behold them, and I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. For I beheld, and there was no man, even among them, and there was no counselor, that when I asked of them, couldn't answer a word. Behold, they are all vanity, their works are nothing, their molten images are wind and confusion. Alright, so much uh, good truth in this chapter, but I think my favorite has to be 41.10 and 41.13. Uh, I'm surprised they're separate because they go together so well. So 41.10, mark that down in your uh, Bible because it's amazing. Isaiah 42. Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. 
I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God, Yahweh, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and the spirit to them that walk therein. I, Yahweh, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep, keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from prison, and that sit in darkness out of the prison. I am Yahweh, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto Yahweh a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth, ye that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness of the cities thereof lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar doth inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto Yahweh and declare his praise in the islands. Yahweh shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time hold in my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. I will make the rivers and islands, and I will drive the pools. I will bring the blind by way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them, and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them, and not forsake them. They shall be turned back, and they shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images that say to the molten images, Ye are our gods, little g. Hear, ye deaf, and look, ye blind, that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf uh, as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as Yahweh's servant? Seen many things, but thou observest not, opening the ears, but he heareth not. Yahweh is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. For they are a prey, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith, Restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil in Israel to the robbers? Did not Yahweh, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore he hath poured out upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it hath set him on fire round about, yet he knew not, and it burnt him, yet he laid it not to heart. Isaiah 43 But now, thus saith Yahweh that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am Yahweh thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my, eye, in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up, and this to the south, Keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Uh, you know, a lot of people say there's nothing in the Old Testament that we can learn, or that we can apply to our lives today. I strongly disagree with that. Yes, there there are some things that we we can't apply to our lives today, like um, um, stoning an adulteress or an adulterer, um, stoning people to death. Obviously not, right? And obviously we don't pray to God to kill our enemies, right? We don't we don't pray. Oh, please God, can you kill this person because he's such a wicked person? Um, no, Christ told us in the New Testament that we we're supposed to pray for our enemies and love them and love those who persecute us obviously it's not saying to um 
you know, to be buddy buddy with them, but we should be praying for them. And obviously, it's not saying that we should love what they do, nor their their sin, or nor their actions. But we're loving the person because if they can be saved, if they can turn to Christ, that's just one more that will be with us in heaven. Um, and God can use sinners. So I mean, look a look a Saul, aka Paul, and look at so many people in the Bible that were sinners and God used. So my point is. We, there are things in the Bible we can't apply to our lives. There are some things that we can't. But um, in this case, yes, there is. Because the fact remains here is God created us all. So this verse here applies to all of us. Um, when it was written, it was probably only talking about, uh, it was only uh, directed towards the children of Israel. But in this case, because the New Testament came, because Christ came, we are all, uh, all of us who trust in Christ under him and trust in the blood of Christ when he did on the cross and in the gospel with a pure and true heart. Uh, we are all his God's children, right? And no matter what, God created us all. So this here, um, we were created for his glory and God formed us and made us. So, yes. And there's another um, truth in here, too, in this verse here. Um, asking yourself well what's my purpose well God created us for his glory and for his pleasure that's the purpose of life right there that's the purpose of your life you are to do God's will for his glory plain and simple so as I 43 8 bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, It is truth. Ye are my witnesses, saith Yahweh, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there is no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am Yahweh, and beside me there is no Savior. That one's uh, plain and simple, isn't it? And straight to the point. Um, a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't understand the Bible. And there, I, I'll agree, there are some confusing parts, but there are so many clear parts as well that people often look over. How clear-cut is this verse here? I mean, it can't get any plainer than this. I, even I, am Yahweh, God, the Lord. And beside me there is no Savior. I've declared and have said, and I have showed, and there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, saith Yahweh, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith Yahweh, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all the nobles and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. I am Yahweh your Holy One, the Creator of Israel your King. Thus saith Yahweh, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, and they shall not rise. They are extinct, they are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, and it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. As people have I formed for myself, they shall show forth my praise. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings, neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices, but thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thy iniquities. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance, let us plead together, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Thy first father hath sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary, and I have given Jacob to curse, and Israel to reproaches. 
Isaiah 44. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant in Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith Yahweh that made thee, and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jerishun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thy offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as the willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am Yahweh's, another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto Yahweh, and surname himself by the, by the name of Israel. Thus saith Yahweh the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, Yahweh of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. What an, another amazing uh, verse. This kind of goes together with that other one that says there is no, no one beside me. This one says here again, there is no one beside me. And who, as I, shall call and shall declare it, and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have I not told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit, and they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor know, that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a god, or a molten, a graven image, that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, and the workmen, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together, let them stand up, yea, yet let they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith with the tongs both worketh in the coals, and fashioneth it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth, he drinketh no water, and is faint. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule, he maketh it out, of, out with a line, he fitteth it with planes, he marketh it out with a compass, and maketh it after a figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. He heweth him down cedars, and taketh the cypress and the oak, which strengtheneth for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Then it shall be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof, and warm himself. Yea, he kindleth it, and baketh bread. Yea, he maketh a god, and worshipeth it. He maketh it a graven image, and falleth down thereto. He burneth part thereof in the fire, with part thereof he eateth flesh, he roasteth roast, and is satisfied. Yea, he warmeth himself, and saith, Aha, I am warm, I have seen fire. And the residue thereof he maketh a god, even his graven image. He falleth down unto it, and worshippeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my God. They have not known nor understood, for he hath shut their eyes, that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. And none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding, to say, I have burned part of it in the fire, yea, also I have baken bread upon the coals thereof, I have roasted flesh, and eaten it, and it Shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? He feedeth on ashes, a deceived heart hath turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Remember o these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant, I have formed thee, thou art my servant. O Israel, thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I have blot of, blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for Yahweh hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth, break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest and every tree therein, for Yahweh hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thus saith Yahweh, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am Yahweh that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that churneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish. That confirmeth the word of his servant, and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that say it to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah, and ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. That saith to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up the, thy rivers. That saith of Cyprus, Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure. Even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Wow, this verse, um, 
I'm not sure exactly, but I think this verse is prophecy because um, Cyrus, if it's referring to Cyrus, king of Persia, this is Isaiah writing it. He, this is way before Cyrus was even alive. So this has to be prophecy. I think it is prophecy. And I think it's referring to when Cyrus lets um, all the, the children of Israel go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple and rebuild the walls. I think this is what it's referring to. I may be wrong, but this to me is kind of, to me it seems like it's referencing uh, that. Hmm, it's interesting. I'll have to, I'm going to look into that more. I'll let you guys know tomorrow. Isaiah 45. Thus saith Yahweh to his anointed, to Cyrus, in Cyrus. To his anointed. To Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him. And I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the, the two-leaved gates, and the gate shall not be shut. I, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, Yahweh, which call thee by thy name and the God of Israel, for Jacob my servant's sake and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, thou hast, though thou hast not known me. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, thou hast, though thou hast not known me. Here's another reference to those ver three verses now, and the last three chapters have um, referenced this. So it must be important if it's being repeated so many times. I am the Lord God Yahweh. There is none else. There is no God beside me. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am Yahweh and there is none else. Again verses here back to back i form the light and create darkness i make peace and create evil i yahweh do all these things drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation and let the righteousness spring up together i yahweh have created it woe unto him that sh striveth with his maker let the pot shards strive with the pot shards of the earth shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it what makest thou or thy work that he hath no hands Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begettest thou? Or to the woman, What hast thou brought forth? Thus saith Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, Ask me of the things come, to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Command ye me. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their host have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city, and he shall let go my captives, not for price nor reward, saith Yahweh of hosts. Thus saith Yahweh, The labor of Egypt, and the merchandise of Ethiopia, and of the Sibians, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine, and they shall come after thee, and in chains they shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication to thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else, there is no God. Verily thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed and also confounded, all of them. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved in Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. But thus saith Yahweh that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am Yahweh. There is none else. Another time. Man, that's like what? Four, f no, five. This is probably number six. Number six, if I'm accounting correctly, in the past three chapters. Um, wow. We have one God. One true living God, and there is none else. Amen to that. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek me, seek ye me in vain. I, Yahweh, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image, and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I, Yahweh, 
and there is no god else beside me. Oh wow, a just god and a savior, there is none beside me. Look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God, <laughs> there is none else. Wow, that's like, um, I lost count now, but it's like eight or nine times now. In this chapter alone, it's referenced a lot. Maybe it's important, you think, if they're repeating it. <laughs> Actually, in this case, it's God speaking through Isaiah who's writing it, but it's God who's speaking. These are God's words. They're all God's words, really, but this is like direct from God. He's saying, get this through your thick heads. I am God. There is none else. I have sworn by myself the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say in Yahweh have I righteousness and strength, even to him that shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In Yahweh shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Isaiah 46 Bell bowed down, Nebo stupeth, their idols were upon the beasts and upon the cattle, your carriages were heavy loaden, and they are a burden to the weary beast. They stoop, they bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but themselves are gone into captivity. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And every, and even to your old age, I am he. Even to the horror hairs I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. To whom ye liken me, and make me equal, and compare me, that we may be like. They lavish gold out of the bag, and weigh silver in the balance, and hire a goldsmith, and he maketh it a god. They falleth down, yea, they worship. They bear him upon the shoulder, they carry him, and set him in his place. And he standeth from his place, shall he not be removed. Yea, one shall cry unto him, Yet can he not answer, nor save him out of his trouble? Remember this, and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Wow. <laughs> Declaring an end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling all. A ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Hearken to me, ye stout-hearted that are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel my glory. Okay. Well... That's going to be it for today, and wow, there are so many verses that we read today about this right here. For I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. So, and this is interesting here, too. This is the last reference in this chapter, chapter 46. This is the this last uh, reference to this, right? But look at, look at it. It's in two parts. So all the other times this was referenced, it's like, I am God, and there is none beside me, right? Or along those lines. But here you have that it's repeated twice, you know, in, in different ways, but it's the exact same thing. It's supposed to repeat twice. So um, this verse has it even twice in here. So definitely important to get this through our heads. And uh, obviously it's important to to take hold of. But um, yeah, there's so many good verses for today. I can't, I can't choose what I want to be my verse of the day because they all... All these are good, like this one, those that wait upon the Lord, Yahweh, shall renew their strength. Um, I also really like Isaiah 41, 10 and 13. Actually, those, those two are probably my favorites, Isaiah 41, 10 and 13. Just great verses. So, um, and uh, there's just so many good ones. So, anyway, that's going to be it for today, guys. Um, thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in Him, trust in Him, wait upon Him, and you'll never be sorry. And we'll see you tomorrow, God willingly, with more Bible reading. So, thanks again, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.